When a toxic person can no longer control you, they will try to control how others see you. Hi everybody, this is Life with Leonard and welcome to another episode. Now on this channel, if you are new here, I strive to motivate and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. And if that type of content interests you, can I kindly invite you to subscribe to my channel, to like this video and to share it. And when you subscribe, please remember to hit the all notifications and that way you will be notified and of course you won't miss out whenever I upload new videos. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about and help you heal from emotional abuse. Now, often survivors of emotional abuse feel intense guilt, often because their abusers make them feel ashamed as if they deserve it. The truth is, no one deserves to be hurt and abused, whether physically or emotionally. For most people, emotional abuse is, is not easily identified, which makes it very difficult to recognize because it can have less clear boundaries than something like physical or sexual abuse. Now, you might be familiar with many of the obvious signs of emotional abuse and manipulation because those two go hand in hand. But, but when you're in a, an abusive situation, it's easy to miss the subtle early signs that build up to a persistent undercurrent of emotional abuse. And that's exactly what I want to help you with today in this episode. Because often individuals who experience emotional abuse, they suffer silently in confusion and psychological distress at the hands, of course, of, of the abuser. And these cowardly individuals, that, I mean, that's the only way, civil way that I can think of describing them on this platform. There are, of course, more harsh ways to do so, but let us not, let us not go there. Because these individuals who engage engage in abusive behavior. I mean, these emotional abusers often make conscious and unconscious attempts to control you by causing you to question yourself and doubt your own experiences. They want you to feel worthless and hopeless and always portray themselves as the solution to the problems that, that they have created. I mean, sadly so. But once you understand the unhealthy cycle of emotional abuse. It will enable you and empower you to recognize when emotional abuse is taking place and of course very importantly how to take appropriate action against it. Now emotional abuse is extremely painful but the good news is you can heal from it and live your best life. So if you are trying to discover how to heal from emotional abuse in your current or past relationships, well, you are at the right place. First and foremost, let's define emotional abuse. Well, I guess that there are many definitions, but in essence, it's an attempt to use highly charged emotions to control the actions of another person by undercutting their sense of self, their sense of self-confidence and or your, I mean, your mental health. Now, emotional abusers are known to be hypercritical and or judgmental. They ignore boundaries and invade your privacy. And you know what I'm talking about. They are manipulative and often dismiss you and your feelings. These are the types of individuals who refuse to talk about or take responsibility for their actions and are constantly either blaming you or someone else for their actions. It's just simply never their fault. But today I really want to reach out to you and invite you I mean, just to spend the next couple of minutes, take it out of your busy schedule as I take you through the healing process. And perhaps you need to rewatch this episode. And of course, as I always encourage you, share it with someone that you know would be able to, in addition, um, also benefit from it. I want to tell you that there is hope to heal from the pain that emotional abuse creates in your life and that you are not alone in this journey. Many people have experienced em emotional abuse and have found healing and of course meaningful connections in healthy relationships as life goes on. But this is not a quick fix. It's, it's a process and there are certain steps that you need to take to help you in your healing, in this whole healing process. 
And the first one is acknowledge the abuse. Now, many people find it difficult to acknowledge um, past abuse. This can sometimes be due to a couple of things. A belief that says I'm shameful for having been abused or what I've experienced really wasn't all that bad. Other times, people repress their past abuse with the hope that if they don't acknowledge it, it will go, it will go away. But what you need to get as you begin to acknowledge your abuse for what it really was, when you do that, you will also begin to take back your personal power over your life. To you, joy can be hard to find, especially on those days you feel overwhelmed by the painful memories and feelings of the abuse. But remember, even the most gut-wrenching emotions are temporary. But more importantly, and I want you to get this, when you decide to engage with your old wounds, be aware that it's normal to feel the same emotions you felt at the time of the abuse. These painful feelings have remained inside you and will only be healed when you accept and move through them. That's why the second step is very crucial, and that is to change any possible negative thought patterns. Emotional abusers alter your experience of reality by telling you lies about yourself and about the world until you accept their explanation of reality over your own. And as you begin to process your past abuse, one way you can begin healing is by challenging your self-talk. This is so important and it should not be overlooked. I'm talking about this negative thinking patterns. I mean, call, call it black and white thinking. You believing and telling yourself, I either get it right or I'm a failure. Also, overgeneralizing. When you tell yourself that all men are like this or all women are like this, when you are disqualifying the positive, telling yourself that nothing good ever happens to me, I can't ever do anything right, you start thinking that you are a terrible person and what's happening to you is all your fault. This self-blame and negative thinking about yourself this pattern has been linked to many things, anxiety, depression, and feelings of shame, of guilt and blame. And if you're not careful, these types of messages will retain their grip on your life until you begin calling them out for what they are and replacing those thoughts with new and healthier patterns of thinking. Until that time, nothing will change. And the third step is to engage self-care. You need to take care of your own emotional well-being. Take ownership of your life. And when you begin to take care of, of your needs, your, you, your needs, you, you will have more energy, first of all, to overcome the struggles that you are facing. And some practical ways to begin this process of regaining power over your life is to firstly embrace more of your wants and your desires. Stop trying and spending all your time and energy to keep your abuser satisfied. To begin this process of healing, and, and you just need to get this from this emotional abuse, you will need to rediscover who you used to be and who you want to become. And start small. You know, Rome wasn't bold in a day. Do something you love. This is your time to reclaim your mind and your life. And oftentimes, people who have experienced emotional abuse, they can carry excessive shame when it comes to being their authentic self. And a lot of you watching who haven't really experienced this might not even understand it. You can't even grasp the concept because how can something that is so obvious be so difficult? But when you are in it, when you are in this re emotional, ab emotionally abusive relationship, it is very, very difficult. It's not as easy as it seemed from from the outside. I'm saying this specifically if you are taking care of someone who is suffering from emotional from emotional abuse or who have been abused, you need to be patient and caring and considerate and kind towards them. Whatever you do, don't blame them. Just be there for them. And remember, for you to heal from emotional abuse, you need to create um, I mean, healthy relationships and allow others 
to support you. That is very important. Friends and family and, and your faith communities can support you as you work through difficult situations, even if you don't feel comfortable sharing with them. But you need help. It can be very helpful to find one or two trusted friends or family members who will listen without judgment and offer the empathy and compassion that you so desperately need to heal. There are some other things, of course, that, that you can do as well, like get yourself moving. Begin figuring out, like, I mean, what type of exercises would, would you enjoy most? And there is no pressure whatsoever. Remember, whatever you decide to do is entirely, entirely up to you. So do something that you love. The great thing about exercise is that it releases endorphins in your brain. And these endorphins are often referred to as your brain's happy drugs. We all know that. But we, you should really try it. They are responsible for regulating your mood. So no matter how difficult it might be to focus on exercising or just gathering the energy and the willpower to do so, just remember that it is good for you. And talking about exercise, remember, of course, uh, this goes hand in hand, to eat right, to get enough sleep, things, things like that. In conclusion, I just want to tell you, I want to tell you to start treating yourself like you are valuable and you will begin to feel like you are valuable too. Remember, you are loved, you are worthy, and you too deserve happiness. Thank you so much everybody for once again joining me on today's episode. I sincerely hope that this episode was of value to you. I really wanted to reach out to you and I really wanted to connect to you, to connect with you and I want to help you to heal. And let me know in the comment section below, how is it going for you? I mean, we have a wonderful community on this channel. Uh, they always reach out and support and make sure that you leave us a comment in the comment section below. And while you're at it, if you haven't, can I kindly once again just remind you and invite you to subscribe to my channel, to like this video and to share it. And yeah, always leave a comment in the comment section below. And oh yeah, subscribing two things. Firstly, it is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a cent. And secondly, it is really easy. You can just click that subscriber button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And please remember to hit the all notifications and that way you will be notified and you won't miss out whenever I upload new videos. Thank you so much, everybody. I see you in the next episode. Stay blessed.